Good morning. My name is Charles Morgan. I'm with Word is Alive Ministries. Thank you so much for uh, being with us this morning, being loyal listeners, uh, supporting us in all ways. It is much appreciated. We are trying to get the Word of God out, and uh, hopefully that will spread, and you can help us do that by sharing on uh, our Facebook, our YouTube, and, and, uh, and all those media, and getting it to people that maybe have not heard it before. This morning we'll be in Amos. Amos chapter 8. And I think this is uh, something that we can see in our nation when I read these words. Verse 11 says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro, seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. In that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. They that swear by the sin of Samaria and say, Thy God, O Dan, liveth, and the manner of Beersheba liveth, even they shall fall and never rise up again. And thank you, Lord, for this uh, word. Please help it to reach the ears that it needs to reach and uh, be with me as I preach it. Amen. As we look at this, I see this as uh, Amos was a prophet he was a farmer he was a herdsman he was called by God to go to the northern tribes of Israel and tell them God has judged you God has told you you know that you haven't done what you're supposed to you haven't followed him you haven't lived up to what he has said you haven't even tried you've gotten away from it uh, they didn't like it uh, king didn't like it the high priest didn't like it the high priest told him won't you go home and Amos told him I'd be glad to. I didn't want to come here in the first place. God told me to come here. It wasn't my idea. Uh, He called me out. I was just as happy as I could be doing what I was doing, and yet he called me, and he wanted me to come and tell you something. He wanted me to tell you what you have done wrong. He wanted me to tell you what you need to do. He wanted uh, wanted me to tell you that judgment is upon you. Folks, I'm going to tell you right now, and I've said this for years in my ministry, and over this over 20 years, uh, we're not uh, about to be judged. We have been judged. I really believe that in the nation of the uh, United States. We have been judged. We have turned our back on him for to- so many decades, and we've just said we can go our own way. And we look at it and go, oh, well, you know, one of these days he'll judge us. No, he's already judged us. You can look around and see the things that are happening and see judgment all in it. God has said, you know, you guys didn't do this. I'm going to show you what it's like. I'm going to show you what it's like without me. And we can see this. I mean, we see crime is, is just rampant, and it's young kids that are doing this. And, and, and we see this, and, you know, and Isaiah talks about the judgment upon a nation is they'll be ruled by women and children. And a lot of people don't like that. A lot of uh, women will stand up in church. Well, I don't like that. Well, I don't really care whether you like it or not. God said it, and we can see it in our nation that, that we're being ruled in this way. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous the things that are being passed, the things that are being done, and the things that are, are against the Word of God, and yet people that claim to be God's people are the ones that are standing up and going, yeah, uh, I think that's what we need to do, even though it's against God's Word. And we see this, it says, behold, the day shall come, and he's talking to the nation of Israel, but I, uh, we're going to apply this to the nation of the United States as well, because it can be, it can be to anyone, but he said, the day shall come. The days are going to come, and he's saying, this is what's going to happen. We can see this, and, and, and uh, we got all kinds of people. They want to read their horoscope. They want to uh, go to uh, these uh, seers and all these things and t- you know, tell me what's going to happen. But we can see it in the Bible. The Bible tells us when you react this way, this is what's going to happen. But we want to we wanted to say, no, that's not it. Let's go to somewhere else. Let's not pay attention to that. That's just an old archaic book. We don't really need to pay attention to that. And uh, the devil's done a great job of getting it out of everywhere. Uh, Congress, uh, schools, churches, Bible studies. They claim to have Bible study, and they go in there and they talk about some book that somebody wrote. And it's not even about the Bible, and they barely mention the Scripture. Uh, I grew up in uh, churches, and we'd go to Sunday school, and uh, they'd, they'd have Scripture in there, and they would actually skip the Scripture uh, you know, and just read the, the commentary. And they'd get to the end of it, and oh, what do you think about that? Well, I think this guy said it just like it needs to be said. Well, most of the time he didn't say it like it needed to be said, and you just completely negate the Word of God as if it didn't exist. Uh, we got people sitting in pews that have no idea what the Word of God says. They just uh, want to say, well, yeah, I go to church. Well, that's not enough. It said, behold, the day shall come, saith the Lord, 
the Lord God, actually, that I will send a famine in the land. There's going to be a famine, he said. There's going to be something coming. What is a famine? It's something that you don't have. Uh, most time when we talk about famine, we talk about food. And he's going to explain that as well, that what he's actually talking about. We think there's a famine. We're seeing this right now. There's shortages. I mean, shortages of all kinds of stuff. Uh, it's just getting crazy. You know, you walk in the stores and there's nothing. I went to buy dog food for my dogs and walked and there was no dog food. Good grief, no dog food uh, on the shelves. And there's other things. And then we're talking about shortages of beef and all this other stuff. And it's going up. And, and people are, are, are getting to the point that they were like, what is going on? On, they're almost a panic so we can understand this we've we've lived in a land of plenty we've always had it if you go to the store it's there and now we're not there's gonna be a famine he said this famine that was going to be different than anything that you have ever seen he said this famine in the land he said not a famine of bread not a famine of food in other words there's not going to be about the food it's not going to be that you're going to go and, and uh, there's not going to be enough food Folks, that's bad, but what he's talking about and what we've already read about is worse than that. He said it's not going to be of bread, so don't, don't focus on that. We've got to get our priorities say, straight. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. It was talking about food and all these other things that we do need. I'm not saying we don't. You can't survive with that. And he said, it's not of bread. And then he said, it's not of thirst. We need bread. We need water. We need food. We need drink. we got to have those things. I'm not saying that we don't, but he's emphasizing this point because when he said famine he knew he got their attention and i hope it gets our attention i hope it gets us and we say there's something about this he said not of bread not of thirst but of hearing the words of the lord now i circled the word hearing because i look at our nation and for years the number one selling book was the bible Everyone had a Bible in their home. Most people right now that can hear my words or not hear them, if you talk to them, they've got a Bible in their home. They may have one in their bedroom. You, the Gideons are great about putting out Bibles in all kinds of rooms and places, you know, in hospitals. And, and uh, I, I know several of them, they'll tell me, he said, if you go to somewhere and there is not a Bible, call us. We will call whoever is close to there and we'll make sure that it gets there. Because we want somebody to take it. If they take one from the motel room, we hope that they read it and we're going to replace it. We have God's word, God's written word here in abundance. We have it around us. We have preachers standing in the pulpit preaching the word of God on all kinds of days and all kinds of media. But we have a famine of the hearing of the word. People listening. Now, he's talking about God's not going to speak to you. But what I'm telling you right now, God has spoken to us. We have the completed word of God here. We don't need him speaking audibly to us. Uh, and people will say that he does. But I'm telling you, he speaks through the word right here. If we will study it, if we will read it, he speaks to us. But he said there's going to be a famine of the hearing of the word. Bible tells us that they're going to, in the end times, Paul said, he said, they're going to have itching ears. They're going to seek people that say the things they want to hear. And they want to discard everything else. We've gotten to this point, we say, well, homosexualism must be okay. Because everybody says, we've got, we don't listen to the word of God. We listen to the nightly news and we pay more attention to that. And we pay more attention to the politicians that we think are going to align our pocketbook that tell us that there's a huge population up there. I'm telling you right now, the facts are that the population of homosexuals in this nation is small, something like 3%, folks. It's, it's minuscule, but yet we say that it's great because we don't listen to the Word of God, and we don't even admit that it's wrong. It's ungodly. God said it's an abomination. Should we love those people? Should we seek to uh, spread the gospel and make sure that they get saved? Absolutely, but it's not uh, God given that someone's a homosexual. Are you listening to me right now? It's a choice, and it's what they do in the bedroom, and we shouldn't even be talking about those kind of things, but they're trying to teach our kids those kinds of things yet we don't listen to the word of god we don't listen to it preached we don't read about it and we'll say and sit in churches and we got denominations saying it's okay even though god's word says it's not when are we going to get back to the word of god we got a famine of hearing the word of god 
we got a famine of hearing the Word of God in all kinds of things. It's not just about that. It's all kinds of lifestyles and all kinds of things that we do. And we, we come to church and we say, oh man, I've got my ticket punched for this day. It's like going into a factory and you clock in. Well, I got it punched today. I did okay, and we go back and we live the way we want to live. We watch the things that everybody watches. We do the things that everybody else does. We say the things they say. We act the way they do, and we wonder why people look at us and cannot see Jesus. We're not hearing the words of God, and we're not applying it. It's It's our nation. You look at our nation, you look at our politicians, and I, I've heard, folks, I believe in a rapture. If you don't believe in it, that's fine. I'm telling you right now, I do. I believe that there's going to be a calling out. Uh, you may believe in, in it and say it's at a different time than I think, but I'm telling you right now, I believe we're going to be called out. Our nation, the United States, is not in the end times prophecy anywhere in the Bible. No one can find it. I've heard these people say, well, it's because when that happens, when that calling out, that rapture, that calling up, whatever you want to call it, happens, there won't be enough people left here to to really keep our nation. Do you really think this? I want you as a child of God especially to tell me, do you think there are enough saved people up in Washington, D.C., in the houses of Congress, in our White House, and everywhere else, and the lobbyists and all that, that they're going to get raptured out, that they're actually saved, doing the things they do and saying the things they do? Here's my greatest fear. The rapture is going to happen on a Saturday night after everyone goes to bed. Sunday morning, church houses are going to be full. You say, well, why do you believe that? Because the Word of God tells me that there's going to be people standing before Jesus. Over in Matthew chapter 7, it says they're going to be standing before Jesus, and they're going to say all these things they did. Didn't we do these things? And he never once says, no, you didn't. So I look at those people and I say, they're good church-going people. They're, they're pastors, they're deacons, they're Sunday school teachers, they're ushers, they're all these people, they're youth directors, they're all these people that did all these things in the church and they said it was for Jesus Christ and Jesus is going to look at them and he's going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. I, I emphasize that word never. He said, I never knew you. You workers of iniquity, you did it all in sin. You didn't do it for me, you did it for yourself. There's a famine of hearing the Word of God. We close our ears off. We don't want to hear it. That's offensive. If a, if a preacher gets up there, and folks, I've experienced this firsthand, and they preach the Word of God, it's going to make people mad. And it's not the sinners that it makes mad. It's not the lost person that's sitting in the, the audience, the congregation, whatever you want to call them, that gets mad. It's the people that have been going to church most of their life. You need to tone it down. Well, that's too rough. Well, you know, and and I've had people, I said, tell me one thing I said that was false, and they can't tell me. But they didn't like it. And they're mad about it. And they're the workers in the church. They're the ones that do things. So nobody's going to say anything to them because we don't want to offend them. They're lost as a goose, and they need to get saved. There's a famine of hearing of the words. The words of the Lord. He said the days will come. Folks, the days are already here. They're not coming. They're not waiting to get here. They're already here. Some of you, uh, you may not even be listening to me anymore because you shut the radio off because it made you mad or you're shutting down your internet or however you're here. It made you mad. I don't want to hear that stuff. He's wrong. He's mean. He's mean-spirited. That's what they thought of Amos too. The high priest, like I said, told him to go home. King doesn't want to hear what you got to say, boy. He said, well, the king needs to hear it because it's the word of God. Folks, I'm reading straight from the Bible. I'm telling you what God said. I've quoted scripture to you this morning, and you still don't like it. You still want to throw it aside. He said they shall, they shall wander from sea to sea. See, they're, they're just like lost people just wandering around. It's amazing to me to see this happen in our nation. It's amazing to me to see us more beholden to the talking head in the evening news than we are the Word of God. We'll take our Bibles and throw them on the table and we'll not even look at them all during the week, but we'll make sure to sit in front of that television. Or we'll make sure to sit in front of our uh, uh, notebook or a computer or whatever it is and, and listen to this person telling us what they want us to hear, what they want us to know. They come out and say things, and then they contradict themselves. And then we just buy into it. They, oh, I didn't really say that. Well, you got you on tape that you said this. 
We've just gone through a pandemic and we've been lied to so many times. One day it'll be this, the next day it'll be this. And they, they say, oh, well, we learned something. You didn't learn something in 24 hours. You're changing. They came out in 2020 and said, this thing's going to last two years. How long did it last? Two years. There was a plan in place. But I'm telling you right now, Satan has a grip on this nation, and he has a grip on a lot of people, and he is using it as best he can. He tried to shut the churches down during all this thing, and it was the people that were going to church that were telling us we need to shut down. Uh, that's the worst place you can be, but it's okay that one. Walmart's open. Casinos are open. There are pastors who said we need to stay out of government that all of a sudden they knew they needed to get in government because government was telling them you need to close your doors. It's okay for someone to go to a protest and yell and throw bottles and burn things and hug and spit and everything, but it's terrible if someone gets up and sings in church. You're going to kill everybody. I've been told I was a murderer, told I was going to have blood on my hands, and then the other people told me I didn't have any faith. I'm telling you, there's a famine of the hearing of the word of God. And it's not from the lost people in our nation. Let me emphasize that again. It's coming straight out of our churches. Straight out of them. A lot of people never came back to church. Folks, I'm going to tell you right now, they were all just looking for excuse not to go. They had a great time because they didn't come to church and nobody was calling them up going, hey, where are you? We're a lost nation. We need to turn back to God. That's what Amos was bringing to them. Jonah had to take a message to Nineveh. You know what? He didn't even want to take it to Nineveh. He didn't like those people. He took an message to him and then when he finally got there because God told him you're going there it doesn't matter what you really think or what you want to do you're going to go there and when he got there the people actually repented they turned but a hundred years later they had done the same thing and God brought the judgment on them that he had already told them he was going to bring on them folks we need to repent in our nation I hear a lot and I listen to a lot of radio programs and they say we're well we're going to have another great revival I really hope we do, but I don't see it happening. I don't see the, even the beginnings of it right now. I see the slide to the other way. I've got friends, like I said before, that are evangelists, and they go into different, different churches and, and, and different parts of the, the nation, even parts of the world. And, folks, I'm going to tell you, there's more of a revival going on in different parts of the world than there are the United States. There are people that are hungry for the Word of God in different parts of the world where they're not in the United States. There's not a hunger for the Word. They go into these churches and they talk about what they are. They talk about the people that they, they look at and they, they know they're lost. And we got people that come up and they'll say, well, I want to rededicate my life. What do you want to rededicate? We've used that term and what it is, we got people lost, and they're coming up there, and they're doing that, and they're still lost when they walk away because they got this good feeling of, well, I told everybody I rededicated. What you need to do is get saved in the first place. Or you're going to stand before Jesus, and he's going to say, I never knew you. We got this thing where we think that if you raise your hand in a church service, that you're saved. And even people that have people raise hands will tell them you need to come forward because if you don't, Jesus said, I'll not acknowledge you before my father because if you won't come forward and let all people know about it, it didn't really mean anything to you. Folks, if we get a good rate at the bank, we'll go and tell more people than we tell about Jesus Christ. What is it? We got a fear that people might get saved. We got a fear that people might end up in heaven. Or is it we got a fear that they're going to find out that we really don't know Jesus in the first place? There's a famine of the hearing of the Word of God. Matthew 4, 4 tells us we're to live by the Word. 1 Peter 2 and 2 says we're to ha start out on the milk of the Word, but we're going to grow because we want the meat of the Word. You still on the milk of the Word? can't stand somebody getting up there and preaching the word of God because it convicts you. What does that conviction mean? We use words in church, don't we? Conviction. What that means is it bothers you. It bothers you real bad. That's conviction. 
It bothers you so bad, you're going to do something about it. That's conviction. That's what we mean by conviction. We use the word repentance. To us, now, repentance means just saying, I'm sorry. Or confessing it. We, we use the word confession. Well, that just means saying what you, you did. But you don't really want to confess your deep down stuff. Confession means admitting. Admitting. It's not just bringing something up. When it talks about confessing to the Lord, it's not talking about confessing the little sins that you've done throughout your life. You can't even name them. It's confessing that you have a sin nature and confessing that you want Jesus Christ as Lord of your life because Jesus Christ is God. Folks, we, we've got to this point that we, we try to separate him from God. And, oh, well, he's this good guy over here. He's some hippie-looking guy that uh, went around telling everybody there was peace and love. He told everybody there was a judgment coming. He told them that the way to him was narrow. And there were going to be few that were going to find it. That the way away from him was broad. And it was called destruction. And there were going to be a whole bunch find it. See, he was telling us exactly what's going to happen. Do you want to be one of the few? Then you accept Jesus Christ today. The Bible tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means every single person, that little bitty word all, encompasses everybody. For all, the cosmos, everybody that's ever lived that is living right now or will live after us. It tells us that the wages of sin is death. The wages of that sin that all have is death. Not the physical death, but the spiritual death. Folks, every one of us will taste the physical death till Jesus comes back. I've said it before and I'll tell you again, the death rate in the United States is still 100%. In fact, it's 100% in the world. Everybody living right now will die. Death runs in my family. I can go to the graveyard and prove it. Death runs in mankind. It doesn't matter what color your skin is, death reigns. When you close your eyes in death, your choice has been made. But that death is talking about is the spiritual death. Then it has a key word there. It says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There's a famine of the hearing of the word. We're not even listening to those words anymore. We're not listening to whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. We don't want to say that. We put little uh, acronyms with it and think, well, we've done our due. A, B, C, admit, believe, confess. If you'll just do that, then you, no. Salvation is a commitment, folks. It's a dedication. When you dedicate, you don't have to rededicate. You've already dedicated your life to him. And if you've dedicated your life to him, you're going to stay with him. And even if you turn away from him, just for an instant, he's just waiting for you to turn back. That's not a rededication. That's turning back to him. But I'm telling you right now, a lot of people that claim to have turned back their back on Jesus Christ never had been facing him in the first place. You know, he told the Pharisees, he said, you're, you're all whitewashed on the outside. You're like a cup that somebody cleaned on the outside, but you still got dirty stains inside. You're like a sepulcher, a place that they bury people. They keep it clean on the outside, but inside there's dead bones. That's what's happened to our nation. That's what's happened to our church. It's because we quit listening to the Word of God. We're focused on ourselves. That's what had happened in the nation of Israel. Every single time they turn their back, Jesus, okay. You say, oh, I thought that was God. I'm telling you, Jesus was from the beginning. The Bible said he was there in the beginning. He'd say, okay, you got it, but you ain't going to like it. And then they'd start crying out to him after years and years, and they'd say, oh, Lord, we want to come back to you. And you go, okay, I'm going to let you come back. Number one, right now, you need to get saved. You need to accept Jesus Christ. You need to talk to him and tell him, I know that I'm a sinner because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It's not about what I did when I was in third grade. It's not about that little mistake I made there. It's not even about that big sin I made. 
It's about that sin nature that needs to be washed out. It's about that inside that needs to be cleaned up. That's what he's trying to tell the Pharisees. He's trying to tell them, get cleaned up in the inside. And you, I'm going to tell you right now, you can't get good enough for Jesus. You come to him and he'll make you good enough. He'll clean you up. I was talking to somebody the other day and I told them what I've said time and time again. You can't talk me out of this. I've seen too much of it. I've seen too many changes that have happened. I've seen too many lives changed. I mean truly changed. I've seen marriages mended. I've seen drug addictions defeated. Families brought back together. But only through the blood of Jesus Christ. Not through their own doing because they tried it so many ways on their own and it didn't work. The nation of Israel was going on their own. He said, he said, it's going to be like this. This famine's going to come. And he talked about what, what was going to happen. We see this time and time again. The just shall live by faith. Mentioned several times in the Bible. We need to live by faith, but folks, we've got to have Jesus Christ first. We've got to have that commitment. We've got to bring it to him. We've got to bring it to him and say, look, I'm tired of listening to everybody else. I want to listen to the word of God and believe it. And I'm going to believe it so much that I don't care what everybody else says about me. I don't care what they tell me that people believe. I'm going to believe what the Bible says is truth. You see, the things they say are lies, but they tell them as truth. But that doesn't make them truth. You can believe that you're a pelican and you're still a human being. You can believe you're any kind of bird, but you jump off a building without anything, you're going to hit the ground pretty hard. You can believe that you're a, a different gender, and it's not true. You're what God made you. God made you to serve Him. And that's what He wants from you right now. He wants you to come home. He wants you to accept Him. He wants you to turn his li your life over to Him. Are you going to have problems? Yeah. You're still going to have problems. You're still going to get bills in the mail. First John 1 and 9 tells us how to take care of that. We're to take our sins to him. When we realize them, we're to take them and say, Lord, I need to, I need to bring them to you. And said he is just to forgive us and to cleanse us. To take care of that. Because he knows that we're still in these old bodies. And these old bodies still want to do things. But we can be cleaned up inside. So that when we stand before him, that we can go to heaven. But folks, I want to stand before him and I want him to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I don't even think that I'm anywhere close to that. In everything I can do and everything I try to do, I still don't measure up. I'm still trying to come to him. I'm still trying and I go to him every day and Lord, I, I messed up again. But Lord, I know I've got you. Lord, I'm tired today. Can you help me out? You see, I've got somebody I can turn to every single time. I've got somebody I can get the answers. When I've got a question, I can go in this Bible and I can see what it says. The Bible tells us that children should obey their parents for it is right. We've forgotten about that. See, these unruly kids and they won't listen to their parents and their parents don't even think that they can tell them what to do. They're ruling the schools. They're running the schools. They're running the society. And yet we think we've got the answer. God's the only one that's got the answer. And he's the only one that had the answer here. And Amos was bringing it to them. They didn't like it. Most people are going to hurt, that heard my voice today or will hear it aren't going to like it. But hopefully it will reach at least one. Hopefully it reached your heart today. Hopefully you'll say, I'm going to get back to God. I'm going to get in my Bible and I'm going to start believing God instead of the pundits that, that uh, tell me what I should believe and what everybody else believes. Folks, there's still people out there that are believing the Bible. Don't believe them when they say that uh, people are turning away from it. There's still people that believe the Bible. There's still Bible-believing, preaching churches that you can get into that aren't worried about what the world's saying. They're trying to tell the world what God said. Amos said there will be a famine of hearing of the words. You've heard it this morning if you opened your ears. 
If you closed up and didn't want to hear it, you didn't hear a thing. But I hope you did, and I hope you accept Jesus Christ today. I hope you will live your life for him. Give it all to him, not just part of it, everything you got. I want to thank you for allowing me to be with you today. My name is Charles Morgan with Word is Live Ministries. May God bless you.